Good afternoon. Welcome to the coffee break. And it is really good to be with you. You can kind of see that I'm not in the office. I am remote. And I'm just going to let you know that my husband and I both got COVID over break. So those of you who have had uh, the disease, I can empathize with you. And I hope that if you are listening to this and have had it, that you're recovered. And if you have it now, I hope you get well really soon. I'm doing well. My husband, not quite so much, but I hope to be back on campus next week. Um, it is kind of red Friday on campus. Now, Justin and Mary, you're not <laughs> showing your, your chief's colors today. <laughs> but okay, that's always the question that comes to the president. Can we have a red Friday? Of course, I always say yes. But anyway, if you're enjoying um, watching the chiefs, we hope they keep moving on toward the Super Bowl. And this is the weekend that determines that. Um, good for you. Thanks for supporting that. Um, today, we're going to talk about the capital campaign that we're in. And so Mary Troyner has joined us to talk about the, the capital campaign for the Olin Howard Workforce Innovation Center. And then uh, if you're on campus, you've probably, if you come uh, by the east side, you may be seeing some movement or some dirt that's kind of shifted around over there. And so Justin's going to talk to us about the project. So welcome to both of you. So Mary, let's talk about, um, I think you have a really nice gift to announce as well as just a conversation with our employees about um, how they can get the word out about our campaign. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it is exciting time. Sorry that I didn't wear my red today. Go Chiefs. Um, I'll continue to support it as I know nothing about football, but we'll sit and watch and be part of the family gatherings. So uh, my apologies of not wearing Chiefs. I am a Chiefs supporter. So, um, so I want to tell you a little update in regards to the capital campaign. So I have kind of taken the, as people say, the show on the road. So I am making presentations to civic groups. So I'm reaching out to each of you to ask if there's any connections that any of you as individuals have to any civic groups within the Sedalia Pettis County or Benton County for that matter um, area. We can make a presentation to anybody within our service region I know a lot of groups are holding their meetings via Zoom. Um, some people are having partial Zoom meetings plus in person. So happy to make those presentations. So if you will let me know, um, you can send me an email or a text or a phone call, whatever is easiest for you to communicate to me. Happy to make those presentations. I have a committee that's happy to help us and Dr. Anderson and others in regards to Michael Rogg. So we have great ways of getting the word out based on getting the word out um, i have exciting news to tell the campus that we received a five hundred thousand dollar grant from sunderland foundation um, i'm very excited about that that makes our totals go up which makes a person that's doing the fundraising a little happy um, but just to give you an aha moment i had this happen to me um, a couple weeks ago and realized that in phase one and phase two which is just a little over seven million dollars um, we are at 51% of our fundraising goal. So that's exciting for us in times of just starting this back in March of last year. If you all note, back in March also started a lovely pandemic. So um, it is a little challenging. I know that there's a road ahead of us and a hill to climb still to raise money. But with your all's help, I would greatly appreciate helping me get the word out. So happy to spread the news about the capital campaign. Um, anybody ever have questions, don't hesitate to give me a phone call. And um, again, about the civic groups, would love anybody's connections to those points um, to pass the word on if they're needing speakers or if I have the opportunity to spread the word about the capital campaign. It will only help us get to our goal quicker. Excellent. Well, congratulations, Mary and the foundation for writing that grant and uh, for the award that you got. I said, every award helps us leverage for other grants that are going to be written and put out to other groups this coming year. So I know a lot of work is going on with the Capital Campaign Committee. And in general, most of our employees don't really see that work. So thank you so much for what you and the Campaign Committee are doing through the foundation. So Justin, I'm, I haven't been to campus. This is terrible, and, and I hate to even say it. I haven't been to campus since Christmas <laughs> break, and I am so looking forward to getting back there. But I, you've sent me some pictures. Thank you very much. 
And I know that there's been some excitement. There's been a little ground moved, maybe um, uh, an oopsie. <laughs> yeah, a little too much excitement at one day. Bring, bring me and the campus up to speed on what's happening. Yeah. So uh, Prost Builders has hit the ground running. So over Christmas break, we, uh, we had the whole area fenced in that's going to be worked on uh, to keep the site secure and keep everybody safe in the area. Um, and they did start moving dirt then just a couple of weeks ago. Um, all of that dirt has stayed here on campus. So we're lucky to have enough acreage here that uh, none of it had to be hauled off site. So we, we have stockpiles of dirt for uh, future projects. We did keep all of the topsoil separate as well. So all of that can be, we can place some of it back in uh, when the building is complete, uh, but then we'll have it here for other projects and things like that too. So, so continued beautification and continued use of uh, the resources that we have here. So that's been kind of phase one to get that dirt out of the way. Um, there was one tree still in the way. Uh, we did unfortunately have to take it down, uh, but it has been removed and we are working really hard to save the trees that we have along Clarendon Road uh, to continue to, to add uh, beauty to that uh, side of campus. So um, since that dirt's been removed, we've been bringing in limestone screenings. Um, some people call it, you know, it's kind of like a base rock kind of thing. And it, basically we just kind of build that uh, dirt back up to make sure we have a, a nice base for the concrete to be poured on. Um, next phase will be uh, in this February, where we're going to be working on a lot of utilities going in the site. Um, we've got a water line to, to move. We have a, a gas line that uh, had to be repaired because it was hit one day, um, but luckily everything was taken care of quickly. Um, it's got to be relocated. And uh, once those things are completed, then they can start the under under slab utilities that'll go in for the building itself. So plumbing and, and some electrical and things like that that'll go in the ground. Those things will get started in February and then we're expecting um, then concrete work would be uh, going in in March and April. And the steel is slated to arrive in May. So. Um, thanks to that donation that the, that that material will be coming out of the factory. It'll be coming out of a factory out of Texas um, as part of the Nucor family. It's from uh, American uh, Building Corporation, which is part of the Nucor family. So. All right. Excellent. Mary, yeah, maybe you would like to elaborate a little bit on the gift that Nucor made as part of the overall project. Um, as you all know, with Nucor being a new facility on our town, they've been approached for a donation. So essentially anything that is the metal in the building of the new um, facility will be provided by Nucor. So that's what Justin's referring to in regards to the delivery in May. So we're really excited to have a partnership with Nucor. Um, as many of you have known, um, they have been very instrumental in our community since the day one of them arriving. So um, we are very appreciative of their support that they are giving to the capital campaign. All right, very good. Well, Justin, I know this has added some additional work to, you, the, to your plate. So you've got a little bit of a help uh, in monitoring that site, I think. And I don't know if there's anything you wanna say about that. Sure. Um, some folks may know uh, uh, Keith Hallett that uh, worked for us uh, some years ago and worked on the Pin Oak project uh, with the unit, with the college here. Um, he's kind of joined forces with me as a, a contracted service to to help me with the owner's rep and uh, project management side of, of the project, to keep eyes on it and ears on it so we can continue our daily uh, jobs here that we have too. Um, and we have some office help that we've, we've brought into just to kind of help keep the regular office uh, going here so that when I'm pulled away, we, we uh, continue to serve the campus as we need to in our normal capacity. So um, hopefully there's not too many hiccups. Uh, of course, there's been some additional work this week. Uh, MoDOT has decided to uh, replace the sidewalks in front of the campus from, uh, from, from the campus all the way to Highway 65, which is a great project. It'll be on both sides of the road. It'll really beautify our side of the campus. Um, it's making for a little bit of a mess. And so if anybody's around campus next week, be prepared too, because we may have some entrances closed and diverting some traffic so they can kind of put in the ADA ramps and make sure everything's accessible. Um, but you'll, we'll see some great improvements and, and they are gonna repave the whole road from 65 all the way out to Quisenberry. And they're adding two foot shoulders from Quisenberry up to our property as well. So um, it'll be a great improvement um, and, and additional light improvements there at Thompson and um, 16th Street, which will have some crosswalks and things like that. So any of our students that are going over to apartments or other um, places uh, down Thompson will have easy access and, and a safe way to cross. 
Excellent. You know, if we could have just gotten them to put a crosswalk right across from the college, that would have been ideal. And we've had those conversations. People may wonder, well, why when they're making these improvements, wouldn't they do that? We did ask. We did and, ask and we did try. Yep. And yeah. uh, it, it was denied based on the proximity to Thompson, but uh, uh, we, we did yeah. try. We were we were told we could put in an overpass, uh, but <laughs> that would have been totally at our expense. So, yeah. But at least, um, you know, I... I don't know if students will walk to the corner to cross or not, but it is nice to know that there will be um, a crosswalk there and the sidewalks will be a huge improvement. We've had students that have had disability issues that have had to uh, be mobile across and, and that's dangerous. So, yeah. Well, Mary, thank you for the work that you're doing to raise awareness about the capital campaign and raise money. Um, we're excited about that. Justin, thank you for keeping um, in connection with Preps Builders. We're uh, excited to see more progress as that building uh, comes to fruition, but it is an exciting time on campus, and I look forward to getting back on campus with all of you. Thank you for joining us today for our coffee break. <music>